He's a bitter man. <laughs> Come to bush, come to bush, come to bush, come to bush, fest, come to bush, fest, come to bush. Ladies and we're back! I found the bush during, during lockdown when, when the breaks were on. There was no, no comedy happening anywhere else and Dave was still making comedy happen when he could within the rules. And it's, it's a lovely place and it's lovely to see grassroots comedy and I'll keep coming, it's my third bush fest. Viva la Bush! Four years of drama school for this shit, man, I can't believe it. Right, let's have a look. <laughs> oh, we know the art. So, uh, I've got a little note here. Uh, with a nice picture of Big Darren Archer. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> dearest Holly Bushers, comedians, uh, distinguished potheads, and future burdens on the NHS. <laughs> I, Boris de Fethel, Anthony Michael Philip Crump, Prime Minister Johnson, uh, lover, you know, father to many, I'm here once again asking Dave for a job. Uh, and I'm hereby officially, we're ready Dave, you know, I hereby officially <laughs> announce Bushfest 2022 has officially begun. <laughs> Give it up for Darren for lending some of his laundry to make a roof as well. It's <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon of this? What do you reckon of this? I used to have a beard and long hair. I've cut it all off, which is going really good for me. I had a job interview. Um, this is fine. This is fine. I didn't get the job. And women keep buying me drinks. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> These women think I'm a very butch lesbian. <laughs> Do you like science? Yeah. Yeah. yeah! I've got some science jokes. Everyone knows a bit of science, don't they? Everyone knows that if a man jumps out of a plane wearing a dress, he won't fall as quickly as if he jumps out of a plane not wearing a dress. That's just the effect of drag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My favourite scientist is uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Do you know who, who he is? Yeah, yeah. Pictures yeah. In case, uh, <clears throat> what Neil deGrasse Tyson didn't realise was when this photo was being taken, somebody else was taking another photo of him from behind. Look. <laughs> Scientifically proven that deGrasse is always greener on the other side. I'm single, I know, big shot. <laughs> I've tried speed dating, you know, uh, three minute dates with a range of different women. I found it's best not to be completely honest with them though. Like, uh, one of them said to me one, one time, uh, sometimes I like to buy a large bar of chocolate and eat it all to myself in front of the TV. That's my guiltiest pleasure. So she turned to me and she said, uh, so what's your guiltiest pleasure? So I said, strangling prostitutes on the canal. <laughs> It's an awkward side. <laughs> then I was asked to leave. <laughs> uh, but you know, you've got webcam girls now, so don't get too lonely. I mean, give, you, give them your credit card details. You can even have a bit of a chat with them if you like. Uh, I gave my credit card details to one of these girls, and uh, she, she said, uh, So what gets you off? And I said, Lack of evidence, mainly. <laughs> There was an awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> then she has to go. I've got, got a refund. <laughs> right, I'm going to carry on with something nice and controversial. Oh, hello, come on. 
It's all relative, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm at the bush because I love bush fest. Last year I had a great time and hopefully the sun comes out so we can recreate last year's vibe. But it's always a fun day. At worst it's a piss up and at best you feel you come away from it feeling like, you know, you've had a really good gig and a piss up. So what's to lose? Men are so lucky they don't have to go through this, aren't they? Come on, I'm expecting a nice strong yes here. Thank you. But sometimes you get a bloke pipe up and they're like, yeah, but we have to have prostate exams and they're no fun either. But come on, fellas. Prostate exam is done with a finger, not a metal instrument. I mean, how bad can that be? Like, if a smear test involved a stranger putting their finger up there, I'd be there every week. <laughs> If nothing else, it would save me a trip to all bar one on a Saturday. <laughs> well, I am now wondering how my nurse would have approached a socially distanced prostate exam. I mean, maybe one of them foam fingers that you get at concerts. I mean, horribly inaccurate as a medical exam, but you'd feel really supportive, wouldn't you? <laughs> Got your own little stinky cheerleader. <laughs> Doing we will rock you into your sphincter. <laughs> This is my first Bush Fest ever. I've been performing for over 10 years. Yeah. Hello, Bush. Oh. It's showbiz. They say you play the same venue twice. Once on the way up, and it's lovely to be back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying the Bush is depressing, but the bees tried to hang itself on the sign. <laughs> it was the starting ground. It was the first stage, if you can call the step a stage. That allowed me to try and be funny or do magic or do weird things with the audience. Quick impression! Quick impression! Magician! A magician with a drugs problem! <laughs> <laughs> now we start it! It's Bushfest 2022, the Saturday. And I had a message yesterday off Nick and Thomas saying, Oh, I come down, my well, I used to be a dancer on the rave scene and the drum and bass scene. I know it's hard to believe looking at me now, or I wobble more than dance these days. But I can remember coming home from this rave this one day. How's that for fucking timing? Why am I here? What have I been up to? I've just been working on my craft and very humble about it. Um, what, what were you expecting me to say? But, uh, also moved in with my girlfriend. <laughs> Eventually she'll find out. <laughs> I call her girlfriend, she calls me the weird noise coming from the loft. Oh, <laughs> uh, fuck it up. Uh, nah, it's nice living with her, but uh, we've actually been together for a while, so I'm trying to spice things up. Uh, she wanted me to do this sexy Chippendale style strip tease. Thank you. <laughs> but uh, when I strip, it's more like peeling an onion, you know? Um, Normally I've got a lot of layers on. Take one or two off and there's a strong smell. <laughs> then I start crying. So I've always used the bush to do some new material, gauge reactions, come back and try it a bit more. And it's been really useful over the years just to have a place to, to come to, to try new stuff. Because there's not many places that are lazy to do it. A lot of people say to me, uh, Fucking hell, mate, you look like Mark Hamill. People come up to me all the time, you, you know, Mark, you look like Mark Hamill. I go, yeah, I know. But when they say that, what, they're not saying I, I look like the fresh-faced, plucky <laughs> hero from the 1977 Star Wars, no. The same Mark Hamill now. You know when he's on a, on a planet by himself? <laughs> drinking green milk like it's special brew. <laughs> Being all grumpy. Right? That's what, so basically what they're saying, when they say I look like Mark Hamill, what they're actually saying is I look like a lonely 70 year old homeless person. <laughs> but looking like Mark Hamill doesn't get you anything really on a day to day basis. But if I was at a Star Wars convention, I'd be drowning in middle aged nerd pussy. <laughs> I don't know why I looked at you then. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what up, Bush Fest? <laughs> Most of you guys know me, I'm Luke, y'all call me Luke man, I say Luke, y'all say man, Luke, man. Luke, man. yeah, <laughs> I'm here representing Birmingham, we're not a pretentious town, we'll stab you but we'll still say hello. <laughs>
I've not long been with my girlfriend. She says, come on over, meet the family. We'll have a little barbecue. Little being the key word. It wasn't little, mate. Everyone was there. They'd even bought the pets. <laughs> Who the fuck does that except for that knobhead there? <laughs> anyway, there was this fucking horrible little rat shit. That's not a dog, is it? Fuck off. If I can pick it up and wash my car with it, it's not a dog. <laughs> well, it's not a fucking dog. And my auntie, bless her, my dear auntie Rose, she's really enthusiastic about the fact I do comedy. You know? She's like, oh, you're doing all these gigs. Oh, one day you'll have your own Netflix special. I'll never have my own Netflix special. I'm a big lanky country bumpkin who can barely speak English. <laughs> the only way I'll have my own Netflix special is if I murder 25 people in a horrendous fashion. <laughs> like a three-part special on my life, you know what I mean? And how I committed such heinous crimes. You call it the jug-eared wanker from Gloucester or something. Available from Friday. I'm single. <laughs> Maybe personality-based, I don't know. I'm single. I'm 45 years old and single. I think I've got five years left before I get voted in as the local paedophile. I think that's the rules, isn't it? 50 year old guy lives on his own paedophile. And then the only people who want to be friends with you are other paedophiles. And then you're stuck around their house every night watching the first two Harry Potter films. <laughs> interested in watching the rest of them when they're growing up. I just want to see kids dressed as wizards. <laughs> Give it a rest, Gary. It's fucking three times this week, mate. She hit the floor. Next thing you know, it's starting out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, guys. It's me, John Portman. Hey. <laughs> No, because it's, uh, it's kind of a funny story, actually. I, uh, I'm going to tell you the funny story, and it's actually not going to be that funny, but... Uh... So I have widened my sexual net. The trouble is, if you widen your sexual net, the holes get bigger. <laughs> It's a really, really bizarre but very, very special place for a lot of the comedians, a lot of the punters, a lot of the people that come and go have had their big breaks and their starts here. Um, and uh, so I had, I had a few, you know, dodgy bosses over the years, um, and one was um, really quite dumb. Uh, so he, he was really into conspiracy theories, which I, I think are just horoscopes for men. <laughs> uh. You know, they can fill the, the pro bills on the weekend and stuff, but it's good to see them trying stuff out, and then you see them on another bill, and you can see the sort of finished product of what they were working on in the bush sort of two months before and stuff, so I've always liked that part, definitely. You! You're so lucky! Look at you! In the prime of your life! It's just always such a brilliant, brilliant year, you know, we've comics old and new come in and we've got quite a few good comics coming here for the last uh, six months, year or so, and they're on the bill, so, and you get to see your friends as well, because, you know, we all are comedy family as well as, uh, you know, acts and things like that. Well, am I an act really? Nah, just pretend that I am. The Bush has brought so many people together and created marriages and friendships and, you know, I met Dave and he's one of my best mates and, uh, and I live at the Bush now and through Dave I've made lots of nice comedy friends and he's a big supporter of, of, of comedy and, a big, you know, a good mate. But fuck me, he needs to stop drinking. Shh.